If you want to invest in property, I suggest you take a good look at this map because it rates every region of the UK by how good it is for investment. And as my team and I were putting the research together, we uncovered a couple of seriously undervalued cities that 99% of investors are not talking about. So today I'm going to take you through what we found and explain which cities are currently underpriced and why, so you can get in early. The first thing that's important to understand is the North-South divide. It's always been the case that property prices in London and the South East have been more expensive than in the North, but the magnitude of that difference isn't always the same. And by looking at how it's changed over time, we can pick up clues about when it makes sense to be buying where. In this chart, the lower the line, the more relatively expensive London is compared to the North, Northwest in Yorkshire. As you can see, it's bounced around around all over the place. But in 2017, it reached an all time low, meaning you could buy three average houses in the North for the price of one house in London. So why did this happen? Well, it's largely to do with how quickly London recovered from the 2008 financial crisis. If you'd bought the average UK property at the peak in October 2007, you still would have been underwater in the summer of 2014 because after prices hit the bottom, they only increased slowly. In London, they fell just as far but bounced back extremely fast, meaning you would have been back in the black by the start of 2011. This recovery in London relative to the rest of the country stretched the ratio. And while it's starting to move back the other way, there's still a very long way to go. By the way, the pattern is exactly the same for the Southeast and the Southwest. It's just the most pronounced in London, which is why we talk about a North-South divide. This extreme divergence in prices has three important effects. So I'll explain what they each are, and then what happens when you put them all together? Firstly, houses in the North are relatively more affordable than in the South for owner occupiers. According to Nationwide, the house price to earnings ratio for the UK as a whole is 6.1, meaning that it would cost around six times the average person's salary to buy the average UK house. But that's an average and the regional differences are massive. In London, it's 9.9, .9, whereas in the North, it's 4.2. And interestingly, prices in the North are more affordable than they were before the last crash in 2000. And seven. At that point, the ratio was 5.5. That's totally different from London and everywhere else in the South where prices are less affordable now than they were in 2007. The second effect is that yields for investors are much higher in the North than in the South. This chart shows that the average London yield is 4.6%, whereas it's highest in the East Midlands at 6.5%, with Yorkshire coming in second. And thirdly, we need to look at how different regions have been affected by the spike in mortgage rates that we've seen over the past couple of years. Although obviously, those rates are the same everywhere in the country, mortgages are much larger in London and the South East, purely because properties are more expensive. As a result, the massive percentage increase in the typical mortgage rate that we've seen has hurt everyone, but it hurts far more in the South, where it can translate into many, many hundreds of pounds in extra mortgage payments each month. So put this all together and what have you got? Well, in the North, you've got prices that are more affordable for owner occupiers. You've got prices that are still attractive for investors, and you don't have as much of the downward pressure that's been caused by mortgages spiking. Whereas in the South, you have the opposite of these things, a market under pressure where prices just can't rise that much further because at their current levels, they barely work for either homeowners or investors. You can see this from HomeTrack's list of property price growth across 65 cities in the UK. There isn't a single city south of the Midlands where prices have actually grown over the last 12 months. They've fallen absolutely everywhere. You don't see the first Southern entry until more than halfway down the list with Reading in 35th place showing a decline of 0.4%. Down at the bottom of the list, where you see the biggest price dips, you see a cluster on the south coast, another in East Anglia, and another in commuter areas in the southeast. As a result, it's extremely hard to see a case for investing in the south, anything other than the extremely long term. But in the north, you have cities where there's so much more room for prices to grow. But where specifically? Well, you could just pick the top cities from Home Track's list, those that are going up the fastest right now. And to be honest, that wouldn't be the worst strategy in the world. But how can you tell the difference between areas that just happen to be doing okay right now versus those that have far bigger growth potential? Well, making those picks is pretty much our entire job. So I'll share with you the three most underrated places to invest right now, in our opinion, those that we're targeting the hardest when looking for deals for our clients. When you're looking for a killer investment, it's really important to find areas where there's a 
catalyst for prices to rise by more than average. One such catalyst is large scale investment. And it's hard to beat this first location in terms of the amount of money being poured into it. In common with some of the other places we'll look at, despite the wider area having lots of lovely places to live and important employers like BAE Systems underpinning the local economy, the city centre itself has been ignored and unloved. That's now changing, with £200 million being invested in transforming the cultural quarter, including a new leisure complex, education hub and revamped historic buildings. There are also plans to turn the area around the station into a completely new commercial centre. And as if that weren't enough, the historical significance of the area can't be underestimated. It was the site of the UK's first ever KFC in 1965. Oh, also, Charles Dickens and Benjamin Franklin spent time there, but whatever. If your knowledge of fast food history is lacking, I'm talking about Preston. It's performing really strongly now, and considering the development plans for the next five years, it has serious potential. Another factor we like to look at is local wage levels and affordability, because the ability to pay higher prices and higher rents is what ultimately drives prices up. And average wages in this next city are among the highest outside London because it's a magnet for highly skilled workers and graduates, thanks to employers like Rolls-Royce, Toyota and Bombardier. In fact, when I studied in Nottingham, a lot of my smartest friends moved there to start their engineering careers, while I moved to London to mess around in the music industry, which probably explains a lot about how our lives have turned out. Anyway, wages high, house prices low, meaning there's potential for prices to rise in a way that there just isn't in the South. So proving that there's lots of investment potential in the Midlands too, our next underrated location is Derby. It's not underrated by us. It's been at our hotspots list for the past couple of years. I've personally invested there and we've done some great deals there for our clients. But among investors as a whole, it's underrated even compared to its neighbour Nottingham. And it's hardly as if you hear investors talking about Nottingham all the time. This will change. When we started talking about Manchester in 2015, it was a struggle to convince anyone of the opportunity. But now that's turned on its head and Manchester has become an obvious investment. I'm convinced the same thing will happen here. In common with Preston, the city centre has been ignored, but that's now changing. There's a huge focus on turning the city centre into somewhere people live and spend their leisure time. And there are big projects underway to make that happen. There's also a huge undersupply of high-spec apartments with modern facilities, which is just starting to be addressed now, with major build-to-rent operator Granger having recently opened their first location in Derby. That means it might not stay underrated for long, but for now, it represents a major opportunity that we're doing our best to capitalise on. And just before we get on to the final recommendation, if you want to invest in one of these places, but don't have the time to do all the research yourself, then book a call with us below, because helping people to access the best investments in a hands-off way is what we do. Our final underrated area is a borough of Greater Manchester. If you look back at the home track list, there are several near the top, but remember the need for a catalyst. All these boroughs have something going for them in that regard, but our third pick tops the list. It's another city centre transformation story, with £135 million being spent on nearly 500 new homes, a hotel, retirement living complex and a cinema. Not only that, but a whole new district is being created just outside town on the site of former mills, with 800 apartments, a hotel, a food hall and leisure activities. And the developer Peel is planning a thousand new homes on Moseley Common. Peel is a huge developer that takes on big projects. So like we saw earlier with Granger in Derby, seeing them invest so heavily here gives us a lot of confidence. This is all happening in Wigan. Much like Preston, it's not somewhere that investors from the southeast would typically think about much. Most people probably have both of them mentally filed away as places where people have a funny accent and play the wrong type of rugby. Investors from the southeast who've been driven out by London's high prices are getting their heads around the likes of Manchester and Leeds now, but it's going to be a while before you hear anyone at a Notting Hill dinner party talking about their latest investment in Wigan, which is precisely why these areas are underrated. But if the explosion of Manchester has taught us anything, it's that the opportunity to buy in at today's low prices and lock in some healthy returns isn't going to be around forever. But even if you are buying in an underrated area, you need to make sure the numbers add up. So watch this video next where I explain how the pros analyze a property deal in two minutes.